welcome back to FinTech Hawaii and Human Humane Architecture with your host Mark Despang on another early beautiful uh, Tuesday evening here in Paradisal, Honolulu, Hawaii. Since this is a critical format here, we have 30 minutes, we want to jump right in and it's based upon that certain things aren't maybe as paradisal as they seem to be from, from a distance and this is our situation of transportation of traffic here. Yes. You either sit in, uh, in an enclosed area that's artificially cooled with AC running in a vehicle that's driven by AC or even worse, which I can uh, support because I'm doing that. I'm behind these vehicles and inhaling all these exhausts. And we're hitting uh, a tragic record that we have one of the worst traffic jams actually in the United yeah. States of America. So today our guest, Nicole Horry, thank you very much Hello. for being here. Thank you, thank you. I'm happy to uh, tell people about Honolulu Aerial. Mm -hmm. HonoluluAerial.com um, is a website. If you have questions about aerial cars, you might want to check it out, see how that could potentially be introduced here in Honolulu. And basically, um, there would be uh, passenger cars that can hold 35 people apiece coming through the stations about three times a minute. So mm -hmm. you have a very high um, rate for, you know, to handle rush hour and so forth. And then the ride is actually suspended by cables. Mm -hmm. So it's a tri-cable system. You have three cables supporting the car. Two of those are stationary. One is providing uh, the force to pull the cars forward. And then uh, that is in turn floating above the trees and um, allows you to get above the traffic. So that's exactly how it would look like. And I have to say that you, Nicole Horry, are uh, very used to the situation here. You've been actually sitting on where I sit right now many times, and you're on the board of directors of Think Tech That's Hawaii. right, so that's right. That's so why we're able to jump right in here into the topic, <laughs> because you're so used oh. to the climate here. So uh, yeah, that's how it would look like. And maybe uh, Zuri, bring back, bring up the uh, the second uh, page here. This is a little bit about facts and numbers. Yeah. Right? So this is a slide from the recent interim proposal that Hart just submitted to the FTA. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see that we're expecting from Ala Moana about twenty one thousand people to get off every day or to get on every day, mm -hmm. presumably the same number getting off. Mm -hmm. And most of those people are heading to either Waikiki or UH. Mm -hmm. So in order to support um, the uh, continuation of their journey, we'd like to add in an aerial system to connect to the rail. Mm -hmm. So if we go to the next slide, you can see the route. Uh, this would be extending along Kapiolani Avenue from Ala Moana Center to um, an intersection at Kapiolani Boulevard and University. And then from that point, you can either take a car up to UH Manoa or go down to Waikiki. Mm -hmm. So the total system length is just 2.6 miles. Um, and depending on exactly how this um, is configured, it could be anywhere from um, 10 to 20 minutes to ride it. Mm -hmm. um, the expected speed is 19 miles an hour. And then, depending on how many stations we have, there's also some time for people to get on and off at each station. Mm -hmm. So you can see that uh, there's seven potential stations. Uh, certainly, Ala Moana, Waikiki, and UH are the cornerstones, but I think people might also be interested in a station um, at the convention center, and then also at Pucks Alley and the Stan Sheriff mm -hmm. Center. Mm -hmm. So the ones in between are a little optional, yeah, but yeah. Uh, I think they would make the system even more useful okay. for people who are riding the rail. Okay, and Zuri, maybe we can jump over the next picture and bring up picture five, because uh, you know, in most cases or many cases, the host is for the host. The subject matter is new as well, but in this case, it's this problem or typology is very mm -hmm. close to me. In fact, me and my family business, we have our beginning in our professional work as architects in public infrastructure. Yes. And this is a project here that is on the screen that is uh, also not on ground. It's actually not above ground, but it's below ground, mm -hmm. which here would be rather challenging because of the high water table. 
But this is just to introduce, um, this is a project we've been finishing very few years ago, the working title is Urban Waterfalls, and I mm -hmm. want to stress the poetic potential of public infrastructure, mm -hmm. making it really cool, making it really sexy. Uh -huh. And so with that, maybe we go to the next, which is another fact sheet here, which talks yes. about cost. Uh, probably not quite as an sexy topic, but <laughs> very important to talk about. Well, I wanted to talk about uh, the comparison between uh, some of the s systems that we'll talk about later on that are being proposed or built in other mm -hmm. locations, mm -hmm. and then we know that the costs are higher here in Hawaii mm -hmm. for construction in general, but you can see that from some of these um, uh, station costs, East Kapolei is only uh, 17 million dollars. So it's not actually um, excessively high compared to some of the construction mm -hmm. costs we've mm -hmm. had in other places. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, since the rail um, is a good model for what we're looking at, you know, when we have a transit station, you have some things that are the same, no matter what the mode of transportation is. It's going to be um, uh, the elevators, the stairs, the platform for people mm -hmm. to board, mm -hmm. and um, you know, just you know, protection from rain, etc. Mm -hmm. So some things are pretty mm -hmm. consistent. Mm -hmm. uh, these will be slightly smaller stations mm -hmm. since you don't have to have the full length of the train, and people mm -hmm. are getting on and off mm -hmm. in a smaller area. Mm -hmm. But uh, overall, I just wanted to you know point out uh, that the costs shouldn't be excessively mm -hmm. um, excessively mm -hmm. high, mm -hmm. even here in Hawaii, mm -hmm. even with our high construction costs. An analogy could be almost like airports with airplanes, right? You have mm -hmm. to facilitate it on ground, but once they take off, you know, they just go. Yes. Right? And so you don't have to build, you know, tracks, at least right, not heavy right. beams, you know, bridges yeah, so in we the just sky. Be, uh, it's a cable. Right? <laughs> That's right, yeah. Uh -huh. You have the first wire going across with a drone, probably, mm -hmm. and then it will pull along a heavier cable, and then eventually they'll connect those together. Mm -hmm. um, since it is a detachable system, so the uh, car is traveling along the cables, and then it detaches to... Mm -hmm. Uh, slow at the station while all the other cars just keep mm -hmm. you know going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that is a case where you'll have different segments built independently, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. So you'll have a loop for the segment between you know one station and the next, mm -hmm. and then you'll have another loop for the next mm -hmm. section of the line. Mm -hmm. And as you were promising already, and this is really important to show precedence mm -hmm. or proof of evidence yeah. for that, and this is a chance to reconnect to my many affiliations to that subject matter. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them, the first project is actually from where I come from <laughs> and the city, I help you out with the pronunciation, but already I we rehearsed and you know, did it really well. <laughs> so it's called Koblenz. Koblenz is actually where my grandparents and parents lived and I've been there as a child quite a bit. And so a very good friend of mine here uh, in, in Hawaii and is a big fan of when we come to picture 10, which maybe Zuri can already jump to picture 10, kind of shows yes, the very picturesque. Yes. So it's the Rhine is River, mm -hmm. it's the bluffs along the Rhine River. So actually for Germany, not unsimilar to our conditions here. You got water right, in the mountains, right. right? Yes, and this is actually a World Heritage Site. Mm -hmm. So when they originally proposed the aerial cars for this location, it was supposed to be temporary. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to imperil their mm -hmm. World Heritage status, mm -hmm. but people enjoy the um, system so much that they decided to keep it and it's a fun ride for tourists it's about eight dollars to you know ride across the river mm -hmm. it takes about five minutes in each direction mm -hmm. and then at the top is you know the location where they had held uh, the fair yeah, that was yeah. the mm -hmm. impetus for this project mm -hmm. uh, I believe about 1.5 million people rode it mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. for the floral exhibition mm -hmm. so brings back the most awesome childhood <laughs> memories and I wish we would have had that actually way back we had yeah. to drive up and climb up the hills where it's uh, good okay, yeah, but this is it, much better. It definitely gives people an opportunity to see things mm -hmm. even if they aren't, you know, f able to be as physically active. Yeah. Um, and you can see that this is actually a system that was designed for an urban setting. Mm -hmm. So it's here kind of in, you know, in a garden setting, 
but um, it has a smaller footprint mm -hmm. than a lot of the other gondolas. Mm -hmm. A lot of the ski resort gondolas, um, you know, are much more designed for protection from the weather, mm -hmm. and they have mm -hmm. more amenities that the skiers are going to use. Mm -hmm. And in this case, you have a much smaller footprint of the station. Um, it's a more light and airy architecture. Mm -hmm. And then also the costs were lower. So partly because this was supposed to be temporary and you know, because it was also a demonstration project for the manufacturer, they ended up only spending $20 million on mm -hmm. this, which is just amazing. Um, mm -hmm. I think if they'd known it was going to be permanent, mm -hmm. they would have probably put a little more money mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. into uh, the um, towers on each end. Mm -hmm. So you can see that there are some kind of functional looking structures mm -hmm. right at the mm -hmm. mouth of each station. Yeah. And those are enabling the aerial cars to get up to height mm -hmm. uh, so that you don't have to raise the entire mm -hmm. station. Mm -hmm. The entire mm -hmm. station could be one story off the ground or even sitting mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. ground. Mm -hmm. And then this uh, tower at the mouth mm -hmm. can be used to um, mm -hmm. help the cars get up and uh, get to uh, there. Mm -hmm. uh, and making just a quick stop in London, which would be the, uh, the President <laughs> yes. 11, to then not stay there much. We're kind of on a European tour yeah, here, so then to move on to Paris, right, mm -hmm. next. Then. Here's another system uh, that's been built in London. It's mm -hmm. actually uh, sponsored by uh, Emirates Air, so they call it uh, <laughs> an Emirates Air air car. Um, but uh, basically, you can see here uh, the wheels and support structure for that tower at the mouth of the station again and it just goes across the Thames. Mm -hmm. Awesome. We move to Paris here. There's a map uh, for a proposed system yes. here and then there are many pictures so Zuri will walk us from 13 to 19. So this d system is actually designed to connect Greater Paris mm -hmm. uh, to the Paris Metro mm -hmm. and it's now in its um, public comment period so they've done a fair amount of the design, but they also are proposing different variations that they're seeking comment on. By the end of the month, they should be wrapping up all their meetings, and um, you should be able to have a better sense for what the community is looking for in this case. But their system is almost exactly the same length, just very slightly longer than the system connecting uh, Waikiki, Ala Moana, and UH. Uh, it has five stations, mm -hmm. so you can see here and in another station, um, another picture of the Crete station, that you, could, you do have different options for where you site mm -hmm. uh, the stations. Um, in the center of the picture, there is a busway. Mm -hmm. So one thing they're suggesting is you know, maybe putting it imme immediately adjacent to the busway would make it easy for people who are riding the bus. Um, in this picture, you can see that it's actually closer to the metro side. So then there would be a sky bridge connecting mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. to the busway. Mm -hmm. But it's a very multimodal yeah. transportation hub. Yeah. Yeah. And it's nice that the flexibility of um, the siting allows you to put the station where it makes the most mm -hmm. sense for the riders because you don't have, you, you just have a lot of flexibility in terms of where you place them. Awesome. And with that thought, we're going to hold that one. We're going to okay. be back to Nicole Horry's Sky Driving today in about a minute. Oh. Hey, Stan Energy Man here. Make sure you tune in on my lunch hour every Friday from noon until 1230 at least. Maybe I'll go a little long if you got good stuff to, to share with you. But we'll talk about energy, all kinds of energy. My favorite is hydrogen and my favorite, other favorite is transportation and hydrogen. But we'll talk about all kinds of energy. Be with us every Friday at noon, Stan Energy Man. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. Welcome. We are co-hosts of a show called Keys to Success, which is live on the Think Tech Live Network series, weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. We're looking forward to seeing you then. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Law Across the Sea. Please join me every other Monday to hear lawyers from Hawaii discussing ways to reach across the sea and help people and bring people together. Aloha. 
Welcome back to Nicole Horry's uh, sky driving vision here that's going to bring paradise back to paradise. So Thank we've been you. in Paris and we're going to go back to Paris for yes, a little bit yes. more. Yes, yes. So just to give a quick rundown of what they're envisioning for the system, here's an angle station, one of the intermediate stations. Um, you can see that there's different heights. So this is a taller version and then there's another uh, version which would be closer to the ground. Um, their overall system has five stations at a total cost of, um, they're expecting about 120 million euros. So it's, most of the cost is certainly in building the stations themselves. Um, and I think it's actually, you know, shows the case that Hawaii might actually do even better because they're only expecting about 14,000 passengers per day. Whereas if you looked at the ridership, um, coming off the rail at Ala Moana, that's mm -hmm. expected to be over 20,000. Mm -hmm. And I think a significant number of people might also be riding directly from Waikiki to UH or, mm -hmm. you know, getting on at Pucks Alley or getting on near the convention center, et cetera. So mm -hmm. uh, I do expect it to have um, a very high ridership. And I think the presence of the system mm -hmm. would also really increase the number of people who are choosing to ride the rail because it just makes it that mm -hmm. much easier for them. They don't have to get on a bus and you don't have to wait for the cars to arrive. Yep. There's just a continuous stream of them coming through the station. Definitely. People at this point, and I've been there many times, they might say, well, you know, this might all work in Europe, but we're, you know, it's debatable if Hawaii even belongs yeah, to the United it's, it's States. It's not but always easy to imagine so, it. So let's go to the mainland so. at least to get a little closer. <laughs> We're going to see uh, yeah. three slides about Austin, so Texas. Austin is also working on a system. Uh, they've allocated some funding from their uh, transit authority to start doing the studies for this. Mm -hmm. um, funding has also been allocated uh, for a Georgetown area line uh, near Washington, D.C. So that would potentially... Um, allow people to cross a river there too. The Austin system is proposed for more in town, just mm -hmm. you know, in an urban setting to get people above the level of the street mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that they're not mm -hmm. fighting traffic. Uh, yeah. But it's nice to see that systems like this yeah. are being proposed. Um, there are some really successful um, yeah. other aerial car systems. Um, Portland is one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, there's all sorts of... Um, yeah. That, you know, and, and us being strategically between, you know, United States and, and Asia, we get one example here mm -hmm. from Asia, mm -hmm. uh, slide 24, yeah. Zuri, There's you. actually a large number in Asia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, it's just representative for mm -hmm. that. Right? The longest one in the world mm -hmm. is um, in Vietnam, mm -hmm. and you just, you know, go for miles across the ocean mm -hmm. in between towers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's kind of amazing. Mm -hmm. but, uh, awesome. No, my favorite example, once when we ran into each other and... I got to know about this uh -huh. and I got hyper excited about it. I was bouncing off you an example that I was stucking with me the mm -hmm. most, which is in Rio de Janeiro, where mm -hmm. there's some favelas who haven't been connected and can't be connected unless yes. you brutally cut through. And mm -hmm. they were looking just for a square foot here and there to put a post. And they mm -hmm. do this to bring the, the, the proletarians, the working class people to work. But in the reverse, it actually had brought tourists into neighborhoods where usually you would never bring tourists. So it's a win-win right, right. situation. And, you know, Rio and, and Honolulu has a lot of similarities <laughs> as far as culture and climate and also challenges yeah, as yeah. far as uh, growing poverty and homelessness. So Well, I do envision this foremost as a commuter mm -hmm, route. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to be a fundamental part of people's mornings and yeah. in evening commutes. Yeah. But during the middle of the day, I do think tourists will take advantage mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. um, I think you know, it's very likely we'll put pricing in the range of $5 a mm -hmm, ride mm -hmm. for tourists if you're only paying for one ride. But yeah. then there's ways to make it less expensive mm -hmm. by providing discounts for um, you know, disabled people or elderly, yeah, uh, by yeah. providing um, you know, passes so you can get a much cheaper rate per ride and mm -hmm. then also bundling it mm -hmm. with your bus pass or your rail pass. Yeah, so yeah. for the local um, community, it's mm -hmm. a very cost-effective mm -hmm. way to mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. get from point to point. And it's also very efficient in terms of energy consumption and Definitely. cost to operate. No. So no, it's, it's it certainly is. And if you could go, uh, Zuri, jump to 28, please. 
this is we promised ourselves we want to be a little bit more philosophical maybe a little bit more visional uh, visual and, yeah. and visionary here i actually want to make a point pitch to mm -hmm. you which we talked before and you said okay martin do it <laughs> for the sake of it and and i would like to be your consultant and talk to the mm -hmm. to the to the manufacturers because i think there's one really important super potential here because as an architect, my point is, you know, it all has to work, but if it's not poetic, it's not architecture. So I think here, you know, once you elevate yourself from the ground and you're mm -hmm. up in the sky, you fly, you're like a, you're like a bird, you're like an eagle, and yeah. it just takes off. But if you are that in a hermetic, once again, yeah. artificially so air-conditioned mm -hmm. cabin, I think this is a big sacrifice on the system. And Mike, the analogy to the, to the heavy rail, which already is what it is and bad enough, but I think the worst thing is the cars. The cars are basically invasive, as the whole rail is. So these are basically cars that are sort of conceived somewhere else for climate somewhere else. But at, at the very end, we say, oops, we're in Hawaii, so we're going to paint some waves on it. So it makes it look like it's somehow local. It has to do something with us. But we're actually sort of not taking advantage of, of the beauty of, of the easy breezy environment we're yeah. having here. There's certainly easy options. So the picture that was just shown um, is a competitor to the picture of the car that we're riding mm -hmm, in. Mm -hmm. um, both of them have about 35 passengers. So you'll have seats for 24 people and then you know you just have a lot of room to move around in the cabin you can walk around without worrying that it's going to start rocking you have mm -hmm. the three cables for stability again mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, usually there's um, you know something to hold on to as well and then room for handicapped or mm -hmm. uh, bicycles things like that mm -hmm. um, it you know, some people might want the air conditioned experience. Mm -hmm. uh, some people, you know, are going to appreciate, you know, just you know having the Wi-Fi and so mm -hmm. forth. Um, mm -hmm. I do agree with you that uh, you know the ability to take pictures without glass in the way mm -hmm. might be nice. Uh, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people will be riding it for you know fun and excitement. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some other places where, like in Hong Kong, they have a system mm -hmm. and they basically have a, a few cabins set aside that mm -hmm. have just, you know, glass yeah. bottoms for yeah. the more adventurous riders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so it's a very different experience. No, that's actually There's a good thought. Also, not every cabin has to be the yeah, same. They go in a row so you can say, mm -hmm. choose this cabin if you're like that. <laughs> choose the next cabin if you have another taste, right, yeah. if you feel different. And the Oakland Zoo is also coming up with their safari cabins. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. basically, you know, they have got the bars across to, you know, mm -hmm. to keep people from falling out. Mm -hmm. But... Um, they're expanding uh, the zoo so that mm -hmm. they'll have a large, maybe 50 acres of bison and elk, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then you'll be riding over that to get to the grizzly bear exhibit. Um, mm -hmm. It's just it's kind of a fun thing to add. Zuri, can you get us picture 29, please? Because I think 29, really, I stumbled upon that picture, and I thought, uh -huh. okay, this is really it. It's about evolution. And um, I apologize, it's a little blurry. I pulled it off the web, so forgive me for that. But this is everything else we have talked about, you know, is in best case exotic because it's not from here and we bring it here and it best phase blends in without, you know, suppressing something that's local here. Whereas the heavy uh -huh. rail is highly invasive, how I'd like to call it. It's a foreign system. It doesn't fit mm -hmm. here ecologically, economically, not at all. But this here is, is local history. That's local, that's local legacy. These are the streetcars. And as you can see, they went up the mountains pretty mm -hmm. high. You can see uh, they are easy breezy. You can see these are almost like they want to fly, but they couldn't fly <laughs> yet at that point. And of course, you know, today we, we don't have sort of the, the idyllic situation of not congested, not crowded streets. We have that. Uh -huh. So I, I, I really see in, in your proposal also the natural evolution and reconnection to a system that actually Honolulu had. And the clever part was that, which was actually then hold against them mm -hmm. when the when the oil industry and they brought their buses they were telling the city who was in charge of that mm -hmm. well you actually have three systems to operate you mm -hmm. have to operate uh, basically the tracks you have to operate the cars and you have to operate actually uh, the power system they even had their own power plants to mm -hmm. to come up with a power for the electricity so they said you know all three things you can collapse into one system, which was the combustion <laughs> engine fueled and driven car. And little did they know, it was too tempting way back. They just had to say, okay, we do this. But now mm -hmm. we know better and we wish yeah, we could go back to that. Now we have so many cars that no one's you know, we, going over very fast. And <laughs> your system is actually getting back to that. It's just elevating it. 
but you you know you have a very low maintenance you have you have one generator so to speak one energy source somewhere that's centralized mm -hmm. and not decentralized just think about the other thing you know when i'm looking out of my privileged view that i have in my little place but the noise mm -hmm. pollution that we have yes. there is actually the the air pollution that you can smell mm -hmm. but there is right. the noise pollution that you hear because that's all true. these combustion engines are so outdated that it's just unbearable. It so would this, be a much quieter system. So this would I be agree. this would be whispering. There's <laughs> there's just nothing. Mm -hmm. And and again, I have um, I'm this is all ingrained in me uh -huh. because you asked me before, <laughs> you know. And and my my mother is Austrian, so I was born mm -hmm. with skis on. So every winter we and hi mom by the way <laughs> to that regard, we we went to the to ski every winter. So I grew uh -huh. up with these with these kind of systems. And the ski lifts. This is another pitch for my easy breezy version of uh -huh. it that I would love to consult when you talk to the manufacturers. <laughs> and I know a little bit about structure. You need a mm -hmm. cage, basically, the structure to hold, but that could yeah. be a frame. Uh, there were the days in America we were talking when the mm -hmm. trains, the on-track trains, were the mm -hmm. dome liners, and you had a glass roof, and you could see yeah. the sky. That was awesome. Yeah. You can implement that to keep the rain off, but to mm -hmm. keep the view, mm -hmm. and then not to fall off. You could have a yeah. very sort of densely woven, uh, stainless steel fissure net. Uh -huh that I've used in architecture. So I think these are all sort of very doable things yes. that, that you can basically implement. Certainly there's room for customization. There's yeah. some pictures from Chicago. I don't know if we can get those. Uh, but they're proposing there it is. Uh, custom cabins. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot fancier than the ones that are yeah, available yeah. off the mm -hmm. shelf mm -hmm. um, that we showed earlier. But, um, you know, it is in Chicago being proposed as a very tourist oriented, you know, yeah. $20 a ride kind of uh, route. And, and Chicago is as I know because I I've been traveling through it. I think it looks beautiful. It, it yeah. does look beautiful. So but it's there's the a windy lot of city. I've, well. I've been there, so it's, it's very chilly. Yes. That's the advantage of the three cables again. Ex exactly. you, you don't have as much rocking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's much more stable. And, and another system which is sort of related is actually the chair lifts, right? Uh -huh. And I remember when I was a kid, the technology was just lift through it, you know. The, it got cloudy, the storms blew, the blizzards, and you just got snowed on and you just lived through it. Uh -huh. And you got bitter cold by the way you got up there. Now they have, you know, these kind of convertible tops that the riders can choose to basically pull close. And I really yeah. love the idea. We hadn't talked about that before, but now it comes to my mm -hmm. mind, the sort of diversity uh, of cabins that uh -huh. every third one is an easy breezy one. Every second one is a more conventional one. So people really have the choice mm -hmm. and, and this is beautiful. I mean, this is really a potential, I think. Yeah, there's there's a lot of fun things in, you can do with it. Ways. There's so many options in terms of the architecture of the stations. Mm -hmm. There are options in terms of, you know, any support towers that yeah, you have. Yeah. You don't need many support towers, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where you do, you have design choices and then you also have a lot to consider when you look at the cars. Mm -hmm. So um, I do have a website, HonoluAerial.com. So I hope if anyone is interested in the concept, in seeing more pictures and seeing videos, that they'll take a look at that. I'm sure lots of people will. <laughs> I am. I'm hooked on that, literally and figuratively speaking. This, this is awesome. And you got to make this work. Oh, I promise that. I'm excited. Because, yes. uh, it has to happen. This is really an innovation for our islands and, and again, yeah. you know. It's, it's a good way to make that connection yeah. from the rail to where we want to go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. And I hold you accountable on the easy breezy <laughs> uh, sort of exotic version of this versus another invasive one which would be still nice but not yeah, as Better nice. than just riding in a car, I exactly, would say. More exactly. relaxing, hopefully. So thank you so much, Nicole. This, this was you. awesome. Thank you. Uh, your vision of uh, sky driving. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. And thank you.